Yeah, I'll always be a metalhead. They, nothing can take that away from me. Right. I mean, not jail, not people, not religion, not anything. I'll always be a metalhead. 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 You're listening to The Great Metal Debate Podcast. Welcome back, metalheads, to another episode of The Great Metal Debate Podcast. It's me, Xander, and today I have come full circle. The very first album review that I ever wrote was for the Harvest Floor album by Cattle Decapitation. That was all the way back in the year 2008, and my review for it was less than a paragraph long. But fast forward 15 years later, and I am a far more seasoned reviewer. Having said that, today we are going to be looking at the brand new album, Terrasite, which was released on May 12th via Metal Blade Records. Cattle Decapitation is a band that I have known about since 2006, and I was first introduced to them with their album Karma Bloody Karma. Back when I was in 9th grade, I was still dipping my toes into the vast ocean of death metal. I remember thinking that it was too much for me at the time. 15 year old Xander was still used to things like Slipknot, Lamb of God, and All That Remains. He wasn't quite ready for a band this heavy yet. Eventually, young Xander warmed up to the band when he noticed that the musical structure had become a lot better when he compared the songs Regret in the Grave and A Body Farm to songs like Unintelligent Design and Reduced to Paste. That was the whole reason I had written the review in the first place. So by the time I turned into a 17-year-old junior in high school, I had become a fan of harder music that included bands like Amon Amarth, Suffocation, Cannibal Corpse, Dying Fetus, and Blood Red Throne, just to name a few. Obviously, Cattle is a band that have come a very long way, both musically and vocally, since the days of To Serve Man, and they have strayed even further from the path of human jerky. A band's overall evolution can go in many different directions, but I feel like Cattle have managed to outdo themselves with my personal favorite album, Monolith of Inhumanity. And they continue to kick ass and take names with their 2015 banger, The Anthropocity and Extinction. Unfortunately, the band seemed to listen to their fans a little too closely when everyone expressed their undying love for Travis Ryan's signature snot throat singing. I love when he does that too, but I strongly feel as though it overstayed its welcome with their previous outing, Death Atlas, where he seemed to do it way too much. Too much of anything can be bad. Death Atlas was not a bad album though, but I definitely consider it to be a lesser album. But here we are four years after the band literally brought back the plague. Humanity has died off because of our own carelessness, but just like a dead phoenix rises from the ashes, mankind has turned into a mere shadow of their former selves. We have become humanoid cockroaches trying to survive in a bleak, uninhabitable world. The first track on the album, Terracidic Adaptation, is a decent opener to the album, but it doesn't really induce much headbanging. Probably not a song I would choose to be on a live set list, but it's okay. As for the next song, We Eat Our Young, I heard it for the first time live back in December when they were on tour with Carcass Obituary and Amon Amarth. I remember not thinking much of it, but after the music video dropped a couple weeks ago, the song has really managed to grow on me. It has a very forced gender reassignment feel to it, but with a slowed down chorus and even slight soft spot moment when guitarist Josh Elmore clearly taps a foot pedal. Another thing to point out is how well the drums sound in the mix, and I've noticed that David McGraw seems to really put those cymbals to great use. His capabilities are on full display in the next song, Scourge of the Offspring, along with Travis showing off his full vocal range. The insignificance begins with more blast beats and the traditional metal riff performed by the band's other guitarist, Billy Surio Dimizio. Forgive me if I butcher that pronunciation. Travis, of course, continues to bludgeon us listeners with his insane gutturals, followed by the more haunting-sounding spoken word section towards the song's conclusion but it wouldn't be complete without vocal layering. One of the heaviest songs on the album goes to the song The Storm Upstairs. I love how Josh and Belisario work together to bring us their chug riff and guitar screech during the song's intro. However, a minute into this track, we get a section that will cause even the most metal music haters to involuntarily headbang. 
This would also be a good time to mention the bassist, Oliver Pinard, and how he truly helps to tie everyone's instruments together. As for the next song, I'll be making a very bizarre comparison that not many other people will catch unless they truly have the ear for it. This song is titled, And the World Will Go On Without You. It's an overall great song, but despite the lyrics and vocals being drastically different from a song from a popular rock band, but just listen to the clean singing of this chorus. Now tell me that it doesn't sound just like the chorus from the song Alone I Break by Korn. Don't get me wrong, I love Korn, but for Travis to unintentionally have the same rhythm and flow as Jonathan Davis is quite hilarious, but in a cool sort of way. I like it. I like it a lot, actually. As strange as that was of me to make such an oddball connection like that, let's get back on the death metal train. Next we have the third single and music video released for this album called A Photic Doom. This song isn't quite as memorable as some of these other new tracks because the instruments have a cluster of noise structure as opposed to the better riffs we've heard thus far. There's still no mistake in that this is indeed a cattle decapitation song, but there is only one thing that seems to stand out about it. The classic stop and start moment during the halfway point, followed by the first and only guitar solo on this entire album. I would like the spoken word section at the end of the song a lot more if it didn't sound so faded out. Dead in Residence is another track on this album that seems to be another filler track that lacks a lot of quality, and disappointingly enough, the same can be said for the first half of the next track, Celastalgia, with the exception of Oliver's standout bass riff. However, there is a dark and gloomy redeeming point after that when the track suddenly emanates a sense of foreboding. This leads us to the finale of Terracide with the track Just Another Body. This one begins with an eerie vibe, only to completely blow us away with cattle decapitation giving us everything they got. Some of David's fastest drumming explodes on this one, but obviously not for the entirety. The slower tempo changes are necessary for this album's closer due to the 10 minute runtime. There's a lot to unpack with this one, with Travis further expanding his vocal prowess. From the midsection to the conclusion, he manages to sound like a completely different person, and it's fucking wonderful. If I have made two things very clear during this review, the main takeaway should be that I am both a diehard fan, but also a brutally honest critic. Even though I am a longtime admirer of the group, and I especially look up to Travis as being one of the goats of death metal vocalists, I can still recognize flaws, and I'm not afraid to point them out. Instead of giving this album a numerical score like I usually do, I've decided to go with a quick tier ranking list. Out of all 10 of their studio albums, I would place this one at 7th place, which beats out the previous album in 8th place. 9th and 10th place go to the first two grindcore albums. This isn't really a bad thing because the four albums that I put before it are just my favorites that I have frequently revisited over the years. My ranking is subject to change depending on how much I go back to this album before the end of the year, but as it currently stands, Terracite is only worth a solid honorable mention. Cattle Decapitation has become so mainstream these days that I guess I sort of don't need to tell you where you can support them, as their music has long since been on all major music streaming platforms. But I will say that their largest merchandise distributor is hands down the website known as Indie Merch. I mean, for fuck's sake, where the hell else can you get the album cover as a skin for your PlayStation 5 controller? 